Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. They offer free checking with industry-leading mobile banking. Who you choose to bank with can make all the difference. Visit firstbank.com to learn more. What's going on, Hokie Nation? And welcome into episode 358 of the Tech Sideline Podcast. Boy, do we got a special one for you here today. Your brand new head basketball coach of the women's hoops team, Megan Duffy, is on the set. And we're going to unpack it all. David Cunningham with us as well. It starts right now, episode 358 of the Tech Sideline Podcast. Back in Hokies fans as we record on Monday, April 8th, 2024 from our studio at the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center. Remember to like, subscribe, refer the show to a friend and head over to techsideline.com to check out our extensive editorial content. As always, your first month of subscriptions is free. Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. We're also sponsored by the Hokie Way. The first ever Hokie Way auction is live now through April 15th, allowing Hokie fans from around the world to bid on exclusive items and experiences, vacation packages and experiences with Brent Pry, Bud Foster and more. The auction will run from noon on Monday, April 1st until noon on Monday, April 15th. Visit thehokieway.org to learn more and to bid. I'm your host, Giovanni Heater. To my right, managing editor, Mr. David Cunningham. And across the way, your brand new head coach of the Virginia Tech women's basketball team, Megan Duffy. Coach, thanks so much for hopping on with us. Hey, guys. Great to be here. It's awesome to see you all again. So we're recording this on Monday. This is your sixth day in Blacksburg. Mm -hmm. What have the first five days been like? It's been extremely busy, but amazing. You know, these these coaching changes are so interesting and somewhat bizarre. Like, it's it's never always how you planned and I've just been kind of on this this whirlwind of moving and shaking from one thing to the next um, obviously it was an amazing you know day with all the media attention and press conference day that's always something I'll, I'll remember with my family and just seeing the you know Hokie fans and Hokie Nation for um, the first time and then a little bit it's kind of funny you wanted them like shut that down and start getting to work because there's so much going on with our game um, right now. So just trying to find that balance of enjoying where you're at, um, getting to know people, but also getting to work uh, pretty quickly. You said the most powerful moment on Wednesday, which was your first day in Blacksburg here, was meeting the current team, right? Mm -hmm. So can you shed, shed some more light on that for us? What, what was your message to them? I, I think there's so many things that go into this job, but the, still the core of why I love this uh, this gig is, is the players. We get to mentor and shape and coach and um, it was kind of a sad morning when I had to say goodbye to my Marquette team, but then moving forward, you have to turn the page pretty quickly, right or wrong, and get in front of your your next um, your next team. And they were giving me a, a Wit and his crew were giving me a, a tour of the locker room, and I knew I was um, set to meet the team later. And a couple of the girls were already in there, um, so to see Rose and um, Carly for the first time, just a huge hug, and um, and then I got to spend some time with them later in the afternoon as a group, and and just just getting to know them and. You know, it's been a, it was a really hard week and a half for him after you get knocked out of the tournament and then, you know, coach leaving and me coming in. There's just a lot of emotions either way, right? And so it was just nice to give them a little bit of stability, uh, just let them know that, like, hey, I'm here. I'm really excited. I want to be here. Um, I'm ready to give my, you know, heart and soul to you guys. And um, I think, you know, interesting enough, I knew some of them from whether that's the AU world or just following from afar, knew a few of their, their family members as well. So there was some easy transition with that which was nice in terms of their playing style you you told the media on friday that you feel confident that all of them will be back to to walk into a place and to immediately kind of have that buy-in from the players how important mm -hmm. is that yeah i i think there's so much going on with the transfer portal and nil and things outside of just building your culture and creating your team and i think we're all trying to navigate through that i think what happened a couple of days ago was just, you know, trying to build trust on both sides. Um, I think we have players who are hungry for an opportunity. Um, you know, some of them, you know, hungry to get more minutes to change their role a little bit. And I think when you come in as a new coach who's experienced and been a winner, I think they have open eyes and ears and hearts to this. And 
I, I know they've always been a group that loves player development and loves getting to that, that next level with their games. And I just can't wait to, to get on the floor. We're going to get going this week on some, you know, small things and get to know their games. But, you know, this is where it's going to be built with their development in the spring and summer. And we have, we have a lot of time to obviously implement things and bigger system things, but to be able to teach and coach them and, you know, just watch the way they move and the way they compete is something I'm really looking forward to. You had Kayla King, Elizabeth Kitley, Ralph Kitley, Loretta Kitley, Raven <laughs> yeah. Kitley. Everybody was in attendance at your introductory press conference. Yeah. Obviously kind of legends here for Virginia Tech women's basketball. What does it mean to have their support going forward? It's amazing. I, I was blown away by the, the the crowd that was there on a you know early morning. So I can only imagine what game day is like. But when you look at the almost uh, to you know soon to be alums, I guess you can say, with Liz and Kayla, and I know Olivia wanted to be there. She was out of town, but it was really cool. She sent me a text, and I, I just I'm so appreciative of what they did to build this program. Um, just the way they interacted with the community, um, they're just so beloved. And as much as I never got a chance to coach them, I always make sure that part of you know when you're at a school that has so much tradition and so much success, you want them to feel like you know they'll they'll never lose their family, even if it's a new coach, and they're always welcome in the facility and the offices. And obviously at games and, um, you know, to see what Liz has gone through in the last couple of weeks, it's, you know, it's just, just incredibly sad, but at the same time, what she's accomplished for Virginia tech and on the national scene, being an all American, I'm on a couple, um, all American committees. And so, uh, the past couple, you know, springs, we, you know, we, we go through the team and try and get them set with, uh, you know, who's the top 10 players in the country by position, all that. And it was really fun to always talk about her and watch her from afar. So to meet her, I was really appreciative of that. And um, I look forward to, you know, as they continue to, to stick around just to help them in any way I can, whether that's, you know, you know, maybe on the professional side, maybe it's career wise. Um, I know Liz got has some rehab to do, but um, you know, even, even Georgia, like she did a lot for this, for this university and this program. Um, I want people to feel like they're always a part of this family and, and really hold true to the statement of this is, this is home. You mentioned on Friday that you feel really, really confident about the resources here and you feel really good about the NIL backing. When you're talking to a, a fan that might not know a lot about NIL, how would you explain it to them? Because it's all still pretty new and it's all kind of a, a rapidly changing landscape. Mm -hmm. How would you explain NIL to your ordinary fan and how important it is to win at the highest level? Absolutely. You know, a couple of years ago when NIL was starting to be in the works and we were all trying to prepare for um, what was about to happen, I think there's still just a lot of like, how will this go? What's the unknown? And I think everybody, everybody made some good steps to lay a foundation to support the student athletes. Um, it's taken on a world of its own, I think, you know, within the last, you know, past year. And then even as the season winds down, um, you know, I think we're still learning. But one of the things that I've always supported is giving these kids opportunities, these, these student athletes opportunities to earn from their brand and, you know, put themselves out there in the community, um, you know, and so I'm, I'm a big proponent of, of them giving those getting those opportunities. You know, as a coach, it's a little bit delicate because for for me, you have to really stay true to the basketball and school and make sure that's still the most important things. As they say, keep the main things, the main things, but also help them navigate through that third kind of element of, you know, developing their brand and, and benefiting off of that. Um, and I think there's so many ways to enhance the community's experience and their experience with it. Um, you know, to answer your question too, about what's important, what it's like with well, a forecast of it. Um, I think, this is the new wave where we have to continue to fundraise and, and have um, great opportunities at a Virginia Tech. Um, I think we can still recruit people who um, want to benefit off NIL, but also want to do it the right way um, and still win championships. You need you need talent, but you also need a culture in a locker room that's um, focused on, you know, obviously the school and basketball part and being there for each other. Um, the best teams who end up winning are the more, you know, the most connected teams possible. And, um, you know, I think we're on a really good path to, to being able to find all of that here. Coach, walk us through how all of, the, all of this came to be. That's something I've always been so curious about. <laughs> so it's been a crazy week for you. You get the phone call from Whit Babcock. What was the decision making process like with, with your husband, mm -hmm. Kevin? Just kind of take us through that. Yeah, I, I, you know, 
uh, we've we've had a lot of success at Marquette. Um, I I love the university. I love the fan base there. It's a, it's a little bit different for sure um, as I'm getting used to. But um, you know, we always thought at some point maybe we would make a move or maybe we would stay at Marquette forever. I, I think for me, I've always been in the moment with my job, with my players, with our community. Um, there have been some opportunities over the last few years, and I've just kind of, in some ways, ignored it and just said, "Hey, I, I'm happy where I'm going." And then when Wit reached out, um, I was like, "Okay, I, I've always kind of loved Virginia Tech from afar. Saw the championship run, um, Final Four. Um, I just felt like styles were similar. That you know, I didn't have to as much as we have to evolve and change and adapt. I think I could bring some of my standards and, and culture to." to Virginia Tech. Um, and then again, it's about people, right? So when I had a chance to sit down with Witt, it's, and he alluded to it in the, um, or he said it in the press conference, it's like speed dating, right? So you're like, you're, you're just like, okay, how do we get to get to the meat and potatoes of what we got to talk about? You know, everybody's doing kind of their research around, it's always top secret, right? So it's like, you know, you know, you guys in the media, you're trying to predict who's it's going to be. And I think both of us, both of us are like, Let's let's keep this as quiet as we can, you know, as we can do and then and then see if it's a, a great surprise, you know, for the team, for the community nationally on the college basketball scene. Um, but I, I just really felt a connection with Wit. Um, really enjoyed his team, love his team now around him, you know, and. I think he believes in women's athletics and what you're watching around the country too is there's certain programs that are continuing to enhance women's athletics and women's basketball specifically. Um, and some who are talking about it, but they haven't really done it. Right. And I think what you all have established here um, the last five years is something like I can keep it going. I can build this momentum. Are there many challenges of like roster and what we have to absolutely, but I've never been afraid of a challenge. So I think there was just a lot of things that were aligned. Uh, there was a comfort level and um, it was actually, you know, like you mentioned my husband, he's super supportive. He was a college football coach. Like he gets this world. All he had to say was like, I think, I think this is it. And I said, all right, I'm in, let's do it. Um, and the rest is history. And I'm on day six or seven or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. Uh, you have some previous familiarity with Virginia Tech. You played here I did. in 2003. I did. Uh, did I have a good game though? That's what I don't, I, I, you, you know, I was thinking four about Four points, that. two rebounds, two assists. <laughs> wow. So, was I, I, so, so 2000, you tell us. Okay. So 2003, that means I was, what, what month was it? Does it say? It was February. Okay. So I was a freshman. You, right. And you played Tech in your second year as a sophomore, and I think you had seven assists in that game. Okay. So, that, so this is but good. that was in that was in. I South was not Bend. setting the world on fire in Castle Coliseum, obviously, but okay. So yeah, so as a freshman, those were the old Big East days. Yeah, those are the big in the Big East. So you know, Notre Dame was in the Big East with Virginia Tech, and I remember this building like it's yesterday. Just it's because it's so unique, and the fans are sitting on you and. Um, yeah, I wish my numbers were a little bit better, but <laughs> that's okay. I was still a young player trying to figure it out, but, uh, but yeah, like I, uh, and it's amazing just to see how it's been built, but yeah, the old big East was something else too. Obviously conferences have realigned and it's a little bit different now, but, um, yeah, that was a, that was a good time back then. The cool thing is, is there were only 3000 people in attendance that day. I think for your first game, we're going to see a 9,000 seat sellout is amazing. the expectation. So, great. I mean, you might see castle on a different level, okay, uh, going forward. What do you remember about playing Virginia tech in your first NCAA tournament team as a coach back in 2021? That was in the bubble too. Oh my gosh, guys, the bubble. Um, um, that was one of the, the weirdest slash coolest experiences ever. I mean, everybody knows that year was just really hard from everything we went through with COVID and they're trying to keep pro sports and collegiate sports going. Um, nothing was normal about it, the way we practiced, the way we competed, the culture. Um, and so we went into the bubble. You know, you're going into quarantine. I remember like the first 48 hours and they're giving you a box lunch and, you know, nobody's allowed, you know, after their COVID test to talk to anybody. And then all of a sudden you're supposed to play a game in another day. Um, and you're trying to keep, you know, the normalcy of like, we have Virginia Tech on the schedule. Like, you know, Kitley was a little bit younger. Georgia was younger. Um, so even seeing that game, how good they were, Kayla was on, you know, the roster, obviously playing big minutes. She was a defensive stopper. I remember in that specific game, we got off to a slow start. 
And then I was a little bit disappointed with how, with how we came out and Virginia Tech kind of took it to us. And then we made a big run towards the end and got hot. I think we made almost every shot to kind of cut it to, it might have been two or three at the end, and then they pulled it off. But um, I saw the foundation of the program. And, and back then, like, fans were allowed in the bubble, but it had to be only, like, your family and friends. So probably the Kitleys were there and, <laughs> you know, like the whole crew and our families. Um, and I think that's probably what – started my a little bit more different kind of awareness towards this program and what you know uh, coach brooks was building um obviously i wanted to be on the better end of it but it's now good to put the (laughs) the real colors on now you are a head coach in this sport at a time of astronomical growth (laughs) i mean like we're talking the the final four in elite eight numbers i mean most watched women's basketball games ever on espn Mm -hmm. um what is that like for you as a coach knowing, and you, you talked a little bit about it, the the buy-in that some athletic departments are buying and some aren't all mm-hmm. the way. You're at a place that is completely bought in. Mm-hmm. What, what is that like knowing that more eyes are on this sport now than ever? Well, this is one of the, the biggest reasons why I came here too, was just that, that recognition that our women are getting here within our community. Um, you know, the, the media numbers are insane right now it's it's absolutely incredible when they're comparing it to NBA final games and you know men's college basketball and I think one of the things that has been so neat to see and it's the same with with Kitley and Amor just people are gravitating towards these these players and a little bit sometimes in men's college basketball as you guys know people might be one and done or a couple years and they go pro they get sometimes more recognition at the pro side and what's happened, I think, in the last few years is now these women who are staying, you know, three to four years, maybe a fifth year with their COVID year, uh, they're becoming fan favorites. And not just like the administration are supporting women's sports and women's basketball, but those the student body now. Like I think it has always been a struggle in past to get sometimes students to anything outside of maybe football or men's basketball. And now you got, you know, the spirit groups and all different universities who are doing it. We have an amazing one here. I got to meet a few of them at my press conference. Um, and the more that becomes contagious, like you can't believe that the day of my press conference, just even some of our students going, coach, let me know if you, if you need help with, you know, recruits or we can help show you where to go. And I'm like, wow, it's just, that would have never happened, you know, a few years ago. And, and then you have the likes, you know, like I said, Georgia, Liz, um, obviously Juju Watkins, Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, um, Angel Reese, like the, the star power is continuing to grow. There will be a next, next wave of star power, which those are the players we're all trying to get. Um, but you're seeing little girls, young boys, you know, an older generation, all different types of families coming to these games. Um, and it's, it, it brings like just a smile to my face. And cause like you said before, G, like when I played back here, you know, 3000 was probably kind of a big deal. Like you, you only got a couple thousand, um, and maybe a big crowd for, you know, against UVA or something like that, like a rivalry game, but now it's consistent and that's what I'm so looking forward to. And I think there's, there's still big steps ahead that we can do with TV deals as well. That's awesome. Coach, you got one game currently on the upcoming schedule. It's the ally tip off down in Charlotte, ready to play Iowa who played in the national championship game on Sunday. There's actually three final four teams (laughs) featured in the ally tip off NC state, South Carolina, Iowa, and then Virginia tech, of course, how excited are you to play on that kind of a stage coming up? It's going to be amazing. I, I got kind of wind of that in this process that we already had that locked in and booked up. And my sister actually works for Ally. So kind of a That's weird convenient. coincidence. She's down in Charlotte. So her team and um, is obviously well-versed in the game and what's happening. So she was really excited. Um, but yeah, to play Iowa coming off the, the last couple of years they've had. Um, obviously, Caitlin Clark is moving on, but you know, that's the one thing that they're going to reload with talent and all that. So I think it'll be a great game. Um, but just to be on that, um, that platform and that recognition with a, with a great brand behind us is, is terrific. You mentioned that all, you know, is to win. What does it take to be a winner? It's a great question, dude. And it takes a lot. I think people always see the end score and, you know, you shaking hands with the other coach or the high five line and the crowds, you know, pumped up and excited but man it's a lot of work it's a lot of day-to-day grinding Um, I mentioned in my press conference just the building relationships building trust with people Um, you know like a lot of times for me 
as much as I've won in my career, I've done it different ways, whether it's rebuilding, it's building, you had returners back, it's happened so many different unique ways. Um, but again, like here pretty quickly, we're turning the page into building this roster and um, and then it's going to be the work in the gym. It's going to be the sacrifices we all want to make. Um, it's it's building that chemistry, um, that selfless nature. Um, and that's sometimes hard right now with everything else going on in college athletics to, you know, think about the person to your left and your right. And I think we can do it that way. Um, you know, we're going to have to go out and recruit um, and hit the ground really hard on that over these next different cycles. And um, I think there's no you know, one or one or two ways to do this. It's it's a lot of ingredients. It's a lot of putting different things in the bucket and, um, you know, just being genuine to who you are and working really hard. And that's what I'm looking forward to in this of, you know, it's it's there's going to be challenges, but um, I'm looking forward to attacking it. So what does the recruiting pitch for a Megan Duffy <laughs> coach team look like? Pretend we're the athletes. What's the pitch? <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, the first and for, the first thing I always talk about is like, I, I just I just try and be myself. I try and, you know, a couple things talk about what um, I've always kind of thought about. Like I've always with my background kind of had the opportunity to be a finished product. I got to play at a high level, obviously at Notre Dame. I got to play in the WNBA and overseas. Um, you know, now I'm in this role of teaching and mentoring and coaching. Um, and so, you know, I've been through all the highs and lows. So there's often times when I sit with a family or a student athlete, you know, I've been able to, to be exposed to most things they're about to go through. So I think there's a relatable, um, element of this. Um, you know, I think with young girls and young women, you know, 18 to 22 year olds, they want relationships. Um, and you're always trying to find that balance of, you know, how hard can you push them to their max, but still love them up, communicate them, communicate to them the right way. Uh, I've always been a coach that believes as much as, you know, the basketball piece is really, really important. Obviously, we all want to win, but having balance um, with their academia setting, you know, being around the student body, being great role models. So um, I think being great people is also an important part of this. And, and that's when you're going to be able, if you have those people together, you're going to be able to sacrifice. Um, and so that's what I'm talking a lot now of just getting to know people. Um, our vision, I think, is, you know, to keep the standard extremely high. It doesn't mean you're going to win so many games, this amount of games, or make it to this point. Like, I kind of put my blinders on with that and just said, you know, just come be a part of this. And we've done it here. I think there's something to be said about that. Um, there's some places that it hasn't been done. It's been done here. Um, so there's a lot of things depending on the family. But I think what's neat with our current players and even, you know, somebody like Liz or Olivia or Kayla, um, they love this place too. And so it's not – um, we don't have to fake or like, we don't like it here, but you should still come here. It's like they genuinely love, you know, just their day to day world. Um, and that's something that's really special when you sit down with a family to have, you know, student athletes who had a really great experience. You were a point guard when you played. Is there anything specific you look for in point guards you recruit? I think the thing about point guards is they're well versed in all positions. And so I really appreciate that. Um, through my coaching career, whether it's developing post players, whether it's, you know, true point guards, um, you know, the game is becoming so versatile. Like there's so much, I would say like positionless basketball. Um, so as a point guard from my past, I always try and make sure I'm well-versed in everything and be a great teacher of all positions and a great motivator. But um, I think for me, like point guard play, like you, you got to have a swagger, you got to have a toughness, you got to be the hardest worker, um, you have to have an amazing attitude. You got to be able to be coached hard. Um, and I think all the great point guards who have come through, whether that's to the WNBA, who played for USA Basketball, you know, we just saw Don Staley win a national championship. Like, they just have that that it factor. And I know that's what um, I'm looking for: people who want to be be coached and you know give 100 percent to their team. And uh, it's it's an amazing. I feel like you you never leave the point guard role when you're a head coach. It's still it's still the same. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of, of that title. I always say I never want to be not called a point guard because that, hopefully that's a compliment. Um, but I think, um, you know, it's really exciting even for our team here to hopefully get to share knowledge with them as we go. Coach, you said during your press conference the other day that um, you had played for nine different coaches in three years professionally. Of course, yeah. you played for the Hall of Famer Muffet McGraw as well. What have you learned from them? How has that kind of shaped you in your coaching journey? When I got into coaching, I kind of looked back at that and I'm like, wow, I've had the opportunity to be exposed to so much at a young age. You know, some people, even with their coaching career, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll work for different people and you learn. But this was as a player. So even how I approached the game, how I trained, how I learned how to be a professional was 
was really important during that time. And, you know, even when I went overseas, it's such a different brand of basketball. A lot of these players obviously want to play overseas at some point. So being able to kind of show them the style, you know, when we say a four or five over here in America, it's not always the same as what they look, you know, look for in Europe and, and just some different things like that. So I learned a lot. Like I had to also learn um, <laughs> how to be a point guard in different languages. So like <laughs> even communicating, had to call plays and, you know, Italian or whatever it was. Um, so that part has been really unique. And I, I played for the Lynx and the Liberty um, and just, you know, learning through those um, at that level was, I mean, the best of the best. To answer your question about Coach McGraw, I know I, I, I talked about her. I got to be on the ACC network a little bit and she was a surprise guest, which was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, Coach, how'd you sneak in here? Um, but she's somebody um, who impacted my life. You know, she she was hard on me. Um, especially my first couple of years getting used to everything. And then she's been my greatest supporter. Um, very honest. And it's really good to have people in your life that, you know, around media and big communities that you can just say, Hey coach, what do you think about this? Um, how do you think it's going? What do you see? And after she retired, um, she was able because of her schedule to come up to Milwaukee and watch a practice and sit in our staff meetings and you know, I gave her some different things to look at from the offensive end and the defensive end and just having that relationship. Um, I feel like I'm lucky even with people I've worked for to be able to stay in contact with them. And, um, you know, I think you'd be silly as a, as a coach in this position to not be appreciative of all those people who have made an impact on you and your philosophies, whether that's even your assistant coaches, your support staff, and then obviously the head coaches you worked for. So I'm just really grateful for, you know, the opportunity to still have Coach McGraw in my life. And then, yeah, all those <laughs> European coaches and WNBA coaches along the way that, that helped shape me um, to have a really good perspective about this game. You worked at George Washington for two years. Yeah. How, how did that kind of help you shape relationships in the DMV? Obviously, an integral part of you know, kind of Virginia Tech's footprint. Absolutely. I got to work for Jonathan Sippus. He just got named the, the head coach at Western Carolina. He was my assistant at Notre Dame as a player. Um, and when he got the head job at GW, he offered me an opportunity to be an associate head coach at a pretty young age, you know, see what it's like as a first time head coach. Um, I was up and down a little bit of the East Coast, you know, with the recruiting trail, but getting in, you know, ingrained and, and immersed in the DMV culture and the programs, whether that was high school or AU, was really great. It's some just phenomenal people, too. They really care about women's and girls' basketball. Um, the style is really good. Um, and so that was a really great just experience of now taking this job. One, there's a um, probably a ton of Virginia Tech alums all hanging out in D.C. So I'm sure even when I go there recruiting, they'll be, you know, go Hokies or something uh, in that area. But it's nice to be familiar with those coaches initially, even up even north a little bit in the Philly area, New York area. Um, that'll be very comfortable. And even at my time at Marquette being in the Big East, you know, we went back and forth a lot. Um, so we're able to to put our footprint in in those regions. And then I think the neat thing about Virginia Tech is because of the success we've had, we can expand down south. We can go with the changing of the conference, as I mentioned before. I don't know. You can go out to the West Coast now. Um, you can maybe pluck a kid or two from SEC country, whatever it is. So, um, But it's it's been good to at least be familiar um, with that area. I still think we can recruit from the Midwest as well. We're not too far from there as well. So good good areas to, to tap into. It takes a special person to be a coach. When did you know that that was your calling? I came from a family of just some educators. And so, you know, really coaching is, is, is just teaching called a different way and mentoring and motivating. So I didn't know what it would look like probably in high school and college. I, I kind of was really interested in learning what that would look like for me. I didn't know if that would be college basketball, you know, even as my pro career, would it go be something maybe in the pros in some regard. And I just kind of made a commitment that I'm just going to get really good at my craft. And even as a player, um, by no means was I this star, or, you know, somebody like Sue Bird or, you know, you know, some of the greats, but um, I just started learning and, and taking a lot of things in. And um, when I was done with my playing career, I could have played for longer. And it was a weird kind of dynamic that kind of came in. I had the opportunity to go back to Italy to play. And I, then I got an opportunity at St. John's um, and they had a really good team. They were potentially, you know, had opportunity to go to the Sweet 16 and NCAA tournament. And so I kind of like unpacked my bags to Italy and said, I'm going headfirst into this coaching. And I'm so glad I did. I didn't really miss the game as a player that much because I was so 
um, ingrained in the the strategy and learning how to recruit and um, different than when you were a player getting recruited, right? And I just, in some ways, have never looked back. I've never left college, I guess, right? I'm still a college kid at heart. Um, you know, when you're in, the, in this environment, whatever university it is, it's like it, it keeps you young. I will still always say I'm one of the younger head coaches um, in the country. Um, but that path has has been great, um, you know, in all the transition. And so I don't know if I knew a date or a time that it was going to be me as a as a coach, but it ended up being women's college basketball. And so far, it's been it's worked out really well. You worked for Kim Barnes or yeah. Ico at, yeah. at St. John's and then at Michigan. Yeah. What was kind of her impact on you? She was great. I, I think two very different universities, um, different points in my career too. So to go back and work for the same person twice is kind of unique. Um, but even when I came to her at St. John's, I was, you know, really just a player, right? Trying to get into coaching. And then I evolved, you know, like I mentioned on some of the topics we talked about, you know, she really let me be exposed to a lot of things. So it wasn't like, okay, you can only, you know, do the player development or you're only a recruiter. She was like, you can, you can do everything. And I want you to learn everything, which by far helped me the best and to be in a situation right now where you do everything as a head coach, you have to do everything. You have to change hats. You know, working with her at Michigan was a little bit different. The university was different. It was, you know, obviously the, the, the bigger school, the football, all the, you know, I call it the glitz and the glam that goes with it. Um, but again, that was the point in my career that I was ready to be a head coach. There were some opportunities. It was just like trying to find that right one and fit for me at the time of my life. Um, you know, and, and again, like her impact has, has, has been, has been great. We still keep in, in contact. Um, and so she's been a, a good, uh, you know, mentor for me, um, in the time I was, was obviously working for. There's this term in college hoops, the power six, right? You're coming from <laughs> the big East. Now the opportunity yeah. to coach in the ACC, what excites you about the ACC and what are some of maybe the similarities and differences between the two conferences? Well, there's some similarities from a standpoint, like the, the big East conference in basketball is so unique, right? And you see it on in men's basketball and you see it on our side, like there's, there's a handful of teams that can go be any team in the country almost, right? You're seeing it with UConn men right now, UConn women who went to obviously final fours and Marquette really treated our label as like, we just want to be one of the best basketball programs in the country. Um, you know, with Shaka on the men's side at Marquette, me on our side, you know, we wanted to recruit against big 10 players, ACC, SEC, you know, even the big 12 where we were located a little bit. So I didn't look at it any differently from the standpoint of like, you're still on the phones with the same kids. Um, but I think there is something different about that, that power five community and the experience. Um, I'm really looking forward to this ACC challenge. I, I just think that there's some tremendous coaches. Um, the talent right now with some programs is awesome. So we know we have to get out and, you know, over these next few cycles and years of really get out and recruit. Um, I, I think as you guys have proven here and now it's me, like Virginia Tech has been to a final four, you know, NC State surprised people and went on a run and on the men and women's side and went to a final four. So you, you don't have to be maybe a South Carolina that's now continuing to go. Like it can be these other programs that can go. And um, we're all going to be biased about who's the best conference. I'm going to be really biased as the new guy. This is the best conference. That's why another reason why I came, um, but it's going to be a, a battle. Like I, I I've watched it on TV, you know, I got friends in the business, you know, even as we, as we get our staff figured out, um, we're going to need everything we got to, to go in and make it a, an impact and difference. And Virginia tech won the AC regular season this past year. Yeah. And this is an eight. I mean, this, this was an eight bid league. Um, when you look at the depth of the ACC, I'm sure it's like, Ooh. Kind of scary, <laughs> kind of scary a little yeah. bit, but but also like, do you think in the back of your mind how much that's going to prepare you for when you get into, you know, super tense situations come March? I think so. And like in the Big East, it was like a three to five bid league, right? And if you got five, it was like, whoa, that's amazing. And then you're talking with some of these conferences now, seven, eight, nine bids, and who knows as they expand the conferences. Will it be more than that? I don't know. Like, you know, um, and what what do records mean relative to it? Like, is everybody going to beat the, you know, beat each other up? And if, like, I don't, I don't know. It'd be really interesting when, you know, even when you add Stanford and some like, you know, really fantastic uh, programs, like how that even, 
you know, impacts the, the, the strength of the conference and bids and all that. So I think we're all on a ride right now. I think these next couple of years, it's, it's going to be so interesting. There's still obviously some new coaches in the league as well. So all of us who are new are going to be clawing and fighting to, you know, either sustain or build it back up or rebuild. And yeah, like I, I think there's a lot of unknowns with like how it's all going to turn out with bids, but it's amazing when you, you know, you turn on selection Sunday and you see, man, you know, eight schools, you know, consistently from the ACC. We've only got a few minutes left with you, Coach, so we want to kind of flip the script here and, and have a little bit more of a personal conversation. This <laughs> is a school where I'm sure you know it's Hokies love and Hokies right, and, and everyone gets to know each other. And um, tell us about you off the court, away from basketball. Well, the, the basketball and the job takes up a lot of time, but for me, um, you guys have probably seen or met my husband, obviously a really important person in my life. He's super excited to, to be out here permanently. Um, we're a sports family. So as much as we're always, my head's in a computer watching film, you know, Kevin grew up playing everything as I did. Um, you know, he was a, f a college football coach, uh, for over a decade. And, um, so he's really excited about what's ahead with the season. Um, we're also a, a pretty big golf family. Um, I'm not going to have as much time as Kevin will to play. I feel like he's already committed to like, I don't know how many rounds of golf in 24 hours with like fans and donors and a love. So the poor guy, <laughs> I think his handicap keeps getting better and better as like word travels too, but he's uh, a really good golfer. So we'll be out, you know, he'll be out a lot more, but you know, whether it's outings or different things like that, we love the outdoors. So anytime we can get out and, you know, just, you know, take a walk, I'm really excited to kind of explore a little bit here. Um, we always have the travel bug. So that's part of us. And I don't know, we're foodies. We're, I mean, I think we're kind of normal people. I mean, I wouldn't say we're anything different than you guys. Um, just very personable. And um, what I'm getting used to is all the people knowing me now, which is interesting because in the city in Milwaukee, it was a little bit different. You could kind of, you know, go to different you know, places and I'm going to say hide out, but you just had your own space a little bit differently. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to kind of get used to that. But so far, uh, so far, so good. Is this the furthest south you've ever lived? Yeah, I guess so. Cause yeah, I, I got to get my y'alls a little better. <laughs> I learned that too. I'm like, dang, I, I'm not saying y'alls as good as everybody else. Um, but our, I'll work on that. Our mustache producer, Nick Brown has <laughs> some of the best y'alls out there. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> how, how about uh places to eat in Blacksburg? Have they taken you anywhere cool yet? Uh, I went with the girls yesterday, just, we were on main street and kind of walking around for a few minutes, um, hanging out with them. And we went to a place called green, I believe it is. Greens? It's kind of a greens, like a sushi. Yeah. Kind of yeah. everything. It's got like burgers to sushi to, um, so we just grabbed a quick bite. So that's that's nice. Um, I've seen our nutrition center, which is amazing. So been able to do that. But yeah, the, the hard part about this transition is you you really have to figure out how to take care of yourself. You know, your, your routine of like working out and eating healthy, which I know I try to do um, to stay healthy. It's a little bit harder now with the transition, but um, I hope to try some more places. I've had the donuts like... I need to stop being sent donuts because they're amazing. <laughs> but, you know, golly, they're so good. I'm like, I could eat this whole box. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, just being out in the community at, at certain, you know, times. And, um, you know, I'm excited for this weekend. I think everybody's telling me how, how cool with the spring weekend and different things going on campus. So it'll be nice to see campus um, rocking a little bit. Speaking of that, you had the chance to meet Coach Pry and, and Coach Young. And yeah. what, what was that like? Just, you know, the – the overwhelming kind of ho hokey love. Coach Pry was awesome. I met him first. Um, Coach He's got Young, a good y'all too. He does, and <laughs> you know he was uh, he was great. Of just like, which way is your head turning? Is it spinning? <laughs> and you know, like he he was just so welcoming. Of like, whatever I can do to help, you know, him her his staff was was terrific. Coach Young was was hustling in from recruiting, so it was really cool to see him. I got to meet his staff, and obviously we're right down the hall, which is great. Um, and I, I just, again, it's the same feeling of just everybody helpful. And, you know, I know I'm the new person, you know, new guy on the block, new gal on the block, but just to, you know, feel welcomed, you know, not only by the coaches, but, you know, the support staff here, you know, Carter, who's, you know, with here, us in studio, like just, um, people taking care of me means a lot. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to do the same when I know where I'm going and what I'm doing <laughs> and where everything is. Um, but hopefully they, they'll, they'll also know that I have their back. 
um, with with this community. Have you gotten a chance to like you like you do you know where stuff is in Blacksburg yet, or you know? Well, you start trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to look at like a few houses and some things. I got to find a place to live, so. I don't think it'll be that much I got to get through, but I've, um, yeah, I've, I've seen different pockets, uh, you know, good enough for the first couple of days. Like I, I, like I always say, like I tease, like I gotta do my job. Like we'll, uh, we'll learn the other stuff. Um, the, the tricks of the trade as, as we go. That's why I need you guys to give me tips here and there. <laughs> well, we're so glad to have you coach. Thank you so much for your time. This was an absolute blast and, uh, look forward to having you on again, maybe before the season gets going. Awesome. Thanks. It was great to see you guys. Yeah. Thank awesome. You. All right. For Megan Duffy, for David Cunningham, Nick Brown behind the scenes, Carter Brown as well. I'm Giovanni heater saying so long from Blacksburg. We'll see you next time.